Hello, 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 and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth, and this is Reading Riley, and we're doing a book haul today. And I'm so excited because it just started snowing, and it's beautiful. It's our first snow of the year. Sometimes we don't even get snow, and it's fat, and it's fluffy, and it's beautiful. Just a she thick. She real thick and I love it. Mm. So I'm excited. I'm officially a Texan. I'm excited for snow. Who who'd have thunk it? Who'd have, who'd have ever thunk it? So we're doing a book haul today. And I have a ton of books that I haven't shown you guys. So I don't know how many I have. I'm just like surrounding myself with them right now. So we're going to just go through the books and talk about them. Sound good? Good. Sounds good to me. All right. First of all, drum roll. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I kind of broke these up into genres. Um, so let's start with fantasy, sci-fi-ish. Okay. First up, we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Lee Bardugo. I wasn't a huge fan of Six of Crows. I am told that this kind of takes it in a different direction for Lee Bardugo. And I think this is adult, but I think it's some kind of academia, dark academia type thing. I actually read 12 pages of this just to kind of see what the hell was going on. All right, so adult debut from Lee Bardugo. Tale of Power, Privilege, Dark Magic, and Murder, set among the Ivy League elite. Cool. Um, so, Galaxy, or Alex Stern, is the most unlikely member of Yale's freshman class. Raised in the Los Angeles hinterlands by a hippie mom, Alex dropped out of school early and into a world of shady drug dealer boyfriends, dead-end jobs, and much, much worse. In fact, by age 20, she's the sole survivor of a horrific unsolved multiple homicide. Oh my gosh, I haven't read this yet. What a multiple homicide? Jesus. So this is like a final girls kind of trope. She might say she's thrown her life away, but at her hospital bed, Alex has offered a second chance to attend one of the world's most prestigious universities on a full ride. What's the catch and why her? Still searching for answer, Alex arrives in New Haven, tasked by her mysterious benefactors with monitoring the activities of Yale's secret societies. Their eight windowless tombs are well-known haunts of the rich and powerful, from high-ranking politicos to Wall Street's biggest players, but their occult activities are more sinister and more extraordinary than any paranoid imagination might conceive. They tamper with forbidden magic, they raise the dead, and sometimes they prey on the living. Whew. Okay, so we've got magic, we've got academia, secret society, final girl trope. I think I'm really going to like this. I think I, I'm, I know Lee Bardugo is very popular, and I want to give her a chance. I want to give her a better chance other than just Six of Crows, so this is going to be it. Next, we have A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. I hope this is the first book in the trilogy or in the series. I think it is. And I think that I saw that a second book came out and that was why I wanted to read this one first. Um, so yeah, I think the second book is out. This is by Roseanne A. Brown and just a gorgeous cover. I mean, that's beautiful. So let's see from for Malik. The Solstasia, 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 Solstasia festival is a chance to escape his war stricken home and start a new life with his sisters on the prosperous desert city of Zirin. But when a vengeful spirit abducts Malik's younger sister, Nadia, as payment to enter the city, Malik strikes a fatal deal. Kill Karina crown princess of Zirin in exchange for Nadia's freedom. Hmm. But Karina has deadly aspirations of her own. Her mother, the Sultana, has been assassinated. Her court threatens mutiny and Solstasia looms like a knife over her neck. Grief-stricken Karina decides to resurrect her mother, whoa, through ancient magic. 
requiring the beating heart of a king. What? And she knows just how to obtain one by offering her hand in marriage to the victor of the Solstasia competition. Ooh, there's a competition. I love a competition. When Malik rigs his way into the contest, he and Katrina, Karina, did, have I been saying Katrina? Karina are set on a heart-pounding course to destroy each other. But as attraction flares between them and ancient evil stir, will they be able to see their tasks to the death? Wow. Oh, I am excited to read this. Holy cow. Huh. A Song of Wraith and Ruin. I might have to bump this up on the TBR because that sounds amazing. Okay, next I have Red Rising by Pierce Brown. And this one, I'm not sure what it's about either. I know it's a series as well. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. His wife taken, his people enslaved. Driven by a longing for justice and the memory of lost love, Daryl will stop at nothing to bring down his enemies, even if he must become one of them to do so. For the first time, Red will rise. What is this about, though? Okay, so this is a trilogy. We have Red Rising, Golden Sun, and Morning Star. I can't remember who recommended this. I think oh, someone recommended this. I don't remember who or why, but I'm going to try it. All right, next. I have never read The Martian by Andy Weir. And everybody I know that has read this is in love with this. I think I've seen the movie, maybe. If I have, it's been a long time. But anyway, I wanted to check this out. This is a used, a used copy from Medina County District Library. That's California, I think. So, can't take the dust jacket off, which kind of sucks, but it is a nice hardcover copy. So, The Martian, what is this about? Six days ago, astronaut Mark Watney became one of the first people to walk on Mars. Now he's sure he'll be the first person to die there. So yeah, I know this is like he's alone in space for like the whole book from what I under from what I understand. After a dust storm nearly kills him and forces his crew to evacuate the planet while thinking him dead, Mark finds himself stranded on Mars's surface, completely alone with no way to signal Earth that he's alive. And even if he could get word out, his supplies would be gone years before rescue could arrive. Ooh, chances are, though, Mark won't have time to starve to death. The damaged machinery, unforgiving environment, or plain old human error are just more likely, are much more likely to kill him first. But Mark's not ready to quit, armed with nothing but his ingenuity and his engineering skills and a gallows sense of humor that proves to be his greatest source of strength. He embarks on a dogged quest to stay alive, using his botany expertise to grow food and even hatching a mad plan to contact NASA back on Earth. As he overcomes one seemingly insurmountable obstacle after the next, Mark begins to let himself believe that he might make it off the planet alive. But Mars has plenty of surprises in store for him yet, grounded in real present-day science from the first to the last page, yet propelled by a brilliantly ingenious plot that surprises the reader again and again. So this is a thriller. So yeah, that's The Martian. Thriller. Hmm. I love a gallows sense of humor, so... That sounds good. That sounds really good. I don't know where to put these after. I'm just going to throw them on the floor. Okay, this one I picked up at Half Price Books. I had never heard of it. I've never seen it. It's called The Weed by Helen Phillips. It was in the sci-fi fantasy section. The Need. Did I say The Weed? <laughs> the Need. <laughs> the Need. Okay. Um, what's this about? When Molly... Home alone with her two young children, hears footsteps in the living room. She tries to convince herself it's the sleep deprivation. She's been hearing things these days. Startling. Startling at loud noises. Oh, she's been startling at loud noises. Imagining the worst case scenario. It's what mothers do. She knows. Something tells me we're going to have an unreliable narrator here. 
But then the footsteps come again and she catches a glimpse of movement. Suddenly Molly finds herself face to face with an intruder who knows far too much about her and her family. As she attempts to protect those she loves most, Molly must also acknowledge her own frailty. She slips down an existential rabbit hole where she must confront the dualities of motherhood. Dualities. The ecstasy and the dread, the languor and the ferocity the banality and the transcendence as the book hurdles towards a mind-bending conclusion. Helen Phillips has created a subversive speculative thriller oh, that comes to life through blazing, arresting prose and gorgeous haunting imagery. It's a glorious celebration of a bizarre and beautiful nature of our everyday lives. Wow, I don't know why I picked this up. Because this really, the description doesn't say much. There's really not much to understand. Like, I have no I still have no idea what this is about. But, cool. Probably because I thought it said the weed. <laughs> and I got excited. Anyway. <laughs> I have an avalanche. Next, I have Daughter of Smoke and Bone Trilogy by Lainey Taylor. And... I picked these up because I fell in love with Strange the Dreamer and I wanted to hear more Lainey Taylor um, or more from Lainey Taylor. And so I got these, I actually started listening to them on audiobook and I really hated the narrator. So these are gonna be an I read, which it will take me longer to get through, but I'm excited for that. So let's look at the first book. Oh, uh oh, I don't know which one is the first book. Oh, it's got to be Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Look how cool these covers are, too. Like, these are, I think these were a new edition release deal. But how beautiful is that? I mean, in this one, Blood and Days of Blood and Starlight. So gorgeous. And I want to understand what the hand and the eye thing is. I've seen people with those tattoos. I've seen the the eye thing, so I don't understand what it is. Oh, once upon a time, an angel and a devil fell in love. It did not end well. Around the world, black handprints are appearing on doorways scorched there by winged strangers who have crept through a slit in the sky. And in the tangled lanes of Prague, ooh, Prague, a young art student, student named Caro, 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 Arrow is about to be caught up in a brutal otherworldly war when a stranger, beautiful haunted Akiva, fixes his fire colored eyes on her. The result is a star crossed love whose roots drink deep of a violent past. When Master Storyteller and National Book Award finalist Lainey Taylor comes from Master, Story from Master Storyteller and a national from, uh, I'm sorry, I have to cancel this channel. I can't read. From Master Storyteller and National Book Award finalist Lainey Taylor comes a sweeping and gorgeously written modern fantasy about a forbidden love, an ancient and epic battle, and hope for a world remade. That sounds amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yay! Okay, this one, I believe, is sci-fi. This is Sleeping Giants by Sylvan Newell. And I know he is coming out with a book, another book that is the first in a series um, this year, 2021. I don't know how soon, but I wanted to pick up one of his other books to see if I'm going to like this new one that's coming out or his writing. So I picked this one up, Sleeping Giants, book one of the Themis Files. Oh, this is a... Series two, reminiscent, reminiscent of the Martian and World War Z. I think this one's the one with the girl. Yeah, okay. So a girl named Rose is riding her new bike near her home in Deadwood, South Dakota, when she falls through the earth and into the palm of a giant metal hand. 17 years later, the mystery of the bizarre artifact remains unsolved. Its origins, architects, and purpose unknown. Rose Franklin, a now a highly trained physicist, leads a top team 
a top secret team determined to crack the hand's code while powerful forces with uncertain motives close in demanding answers about the relic and what it portends for humanity but once the pieces of the puzzle are in place will the result prove to be an instrument of lasting peace or a weapon of mass destruction so this sounds really interesting um I just have no idea what the hell this giant hand could be, so I'm intrigued. And this is actually, it looks like a pretty short book, 319 pages. So this could be one that I could get through pretty quickly. So there's that. This is one of the books on my Read Harder Challenge that Lala has been obsessing about, and I finally picked it up. It's a lot away. I had no idea that by Darcy Little Badger, excuse me. Um, I didn't realize that this was like a fantasy type type novel. And it it is so gorgeous, this cover. And let me show you the actual front of the book too. Anyway, a lot away. Imagine an American very an America very similar to our own. It's got homework, best friends, pistachio ice cream. There are some differences. This America has been shaped dramatically by the magic monster's knowledge and legends of its peoples, those um, indigenous and those not. Some of those forces are charmingly everyday, like the ability to make an orb of light appear or travel across the world through rings of fungi. But other forces are less charming and should never see the light of day. Alatsoe lives in a slightly stranger America. She can raise the ghosts of dead animals, a skill passed down through generations of her Lipen Apache family. Lipen? Lipen? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm saying that wrong. I know I am. Um, her beloved cousin has just been murdered in a town that wants no prying eyes, but she's going to do more than pry. The picture-perfect facade of Willoughby masks gruesome of Willoughby masks gruesome secrets and she will rely on her wits, skills and friends to tear off the mask and protect her family. Darcy Little Badger is an extraordinary debut talent. And I think Darcy Little Badger has another book coming out this year too. So that I'm excited for. This will absolutely be read by the end of the year. Can't tell you exactly when. Okay. <laughs> books, books, books. It's still snowing. All right. I also got this which I did not realize had Georgia Orwell's 1984 and Animal Farm. I thought it was just Animal Farm. Um, I already own, this is now the third copy of 1984 I own, which I love. This is going to be um, read this year as part of my wanting to read more classics this year. I love 1984. I've never read Animal Farm, so I will be reading that. Oh, well, look, it has synopsis for both. That's well thought out. So let's see what Animal Farm's about. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Oh, I'm already into this. George Orwell's classic satire of the Russian Revolution is the account of the bold struggle initiated by animals that transforms Mr. Jones's manor farm into Animal Farm, a wholly democratic society built on the credo that all animals are created equal. Out of their cleverness, the pigs, Napoleon, Squealer, and Snowball oh, emerge as leaders of the new community in a subtle evolution that proves disastrous. The climax is brutal. Is the brutal betrayal of the faith, faithful horse boxer when totalitarian rule is reestablished with the bloodstained postscript of the founding slogan, but some animals are more equal than others. So I'm confused, like, are the animals talking? Do the animals talk to each other in this? How does this work? Obviously, this is going to be a social commentary about our society and probably, you know, the privileged, the rich, the wealthy, and however that distinguishes them between pigs and horses or whatever, however the story is set up, but I'm excited for that. That's going to be great. Next I have Writers and Lovers by Lily King. And this one's just gorgeous too. Look at that. Read with Jenna. Who's Jenna? 
Okay. <clears throat> so let's see what this is about. We have blindsided by her mother's sudden death and wrecked by a recent love affair, Casey Peabody has arrived in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the summer of 1997 without a plan. Her mail consists of wedding invitations and final notices from debt collector, a former child golf prodigy. She now waits tables in Harvard Square and rents a tiny moldy room in the side of a garage where she works on the novel she's been writing for six years. At 31, Casey is still clutching on to, continue on back flap, something nearly all of her friends have let go of, the determination to live a creative life. Oh shit, this one's going to hit hard for me. This is why I picked this up. When she falls for her two very for two very different men at the same time, her world fractures even more. Casey's fight to fulfill her ambitions and balance the conflicting demands of art and life is challenged in ways that push her to the brink. Oof, this one's going to be tough. But I've heard really good things. And so I'm excited for that too. All right, moving on. This book I'm reading with my book club this month. So this will be read by the end of the month. It is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Another one that I picked up because I know they have a new release coming out um, or has already come out. I'm not sure. I've heard that this is multi mixed media. And that I should, I read this instead of you read it. And yes, it looks like it would be a fun read. We've got some text message. We've got whatever this is. Oh yeah, some cool file stuff. I love this kind of stuff. Let's see. Okay, so. Everyone in Fairview knows the story. Pretty and popular high school senior Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal Sink, who then killed himself. It was, it was all anyone can talk about, and five years later, Pip sees how the tragedy still haunts her town. <clears throat> but she can't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. She knew Sal when she was a child, and he was always so kind to her. How could he possibly have been a killer? Now a senior herself, Pip decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project. At first, just to cast doubt on the original investigation, but soon she discovers a trail of dark secrets that might actually prove Sal innocent, and the line between past and present begins to blur. Someone in Fairview doesn't want Pip digging around for answers, and now her life might be in danger. This is the story of an investigation turned obsession, full of twists and turns with an ending you'll never expect a YA mystery thriller. So there's very few of those that I get super into. Um, typically if I'm reading YA, it's dystopian or fantasy. Um, but I'm really excited to check this out. I obviously, Sal is probably innocent and whoever actually did do it is going to try to silence her. I think somebody told me this was kind of like a podcasty type style. Like if you like podcast tropes in books that you would like this. Cause I'm guessing it's like a report of some kind. I don't think it's an actual podcast, but I'm super excited. I like, I do like um, mixed media. So that should be fun. All right, the next one I picked up was the Escape Room by Megan Golden. So I did read The Night Swim recently by her, and I like her writing and I like the book, so I picked this one up to see what else she has to offer. And I have no idea what it's about, so let's see. I'm, I'm sure it's, I know it's a thriller. Like clearly this is like your quintessential thriller cover, just one, scared looking eye peeping out through a door and it's called escape room yes yes please in this unforgettable debut four young wall street rising stars discover the price of ambition when an escape room challenge turns into a lethal game of revenge uh oh i'm getting saw vibes right now and i don't know how i'm feeling about it 
Welcome to the escape room. Your goal is simple, get out alive. In the lucrative world of finance, Vincent, Jules, and Sylvie, and Sam, are at the top of their game, but they've mastered the art of the deal and celebrate their success in style. But a life of extreme luxury always comes at a cost. Invited to participate in an escape room challenge as a team building exercise. Ugh, team building exercises suck. The, fero the ferociously competitive co-workers crowd into the elevator of a high-rise building eager to prove themselves. But when the lights go off and the door stays shut, it quickly becomes clear that this is no ordinary competition. They're caught in a dangerous game of survival. Trapped in the dark, the colleagues must put aside their bitter rivalries and work together to solve cryptic clues to break free. But as the game begins to reveal the team's darkest secrets, ooh, I like a dark secret, they realize there's a price to be paid for the terrible deeds they've committed in their ruthless climb up the corporate ladder. Yes! As tempers fray and clues turn deadly, they might solve one final chilling puzzle. Which of them will kill in order to survive? Oh my God. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read this. Mm, I love ripping down the corporate ladder and finding out what all of their secrets are and all of the grimy, nasty shit they did to get up to the top. Ooh, they're going down. They're going down. All right, I just have a couple more. <laughs> Almost done. Okay, this one is called It's Always the Husband by Michelle Campbell. That is for fans of Ruth Ware and Gillian Flynn. Meet your next obsession. I mean, hi, hello, hit me. Okay, so I believe this is um, a dual timeline. Um, with women. I think this is also an academic deal. Okay, let's see. Kate, Aubrey, and Jenny first met as college roommates, yep, and soon become inseparable. Despite being as different as three women can be, Kate was beautiful, wild, wealthy, and damaged. Aubrey, on um, financial aid, came from a broken home and wanted more than anything to distance herself from her past. And Jenny was a striver, brilliant, ambitious, and determined to succeed. As an unlikely friendship formed, the three of them swore they would always be there for each other. But then 20 years later, one of them is standing at the edge of a bridge and someone is urging her to jump. How did it come to this? Kate married the gorgeous party boy. Aubrey married up. Jenny married the boy next door. But how can these three women love and hate each other? Can feelings this strong lead to murder? When one of them dies under mysterious circumstances, will everyone assume, as is so often the case, that it's always the husband? Hmm, will they? A suspenseful, absorbing novel that examines the complexities of friendship. It's always the husband will keep readers guessing. Okay, whew, okay, yes. So I think we're following, <clears throat> I don't know if it's multi multi POV, but I think we'll like go back and forth between now and school and to confuse you and figure out what the deal is. I think something happened in the past and they're confronting it. Here comes my dog. <sighs> Hi, Blue Blue. Hi, buddy. What you doing? What you doing, bub? You wanna be in my video? Look, it's snowing. Okay, and lastly, I've already read this book, but I could not help myself and had to get the special edition Dune. I mean, I think this is the most gorgeous book. It has blue page edges. I mean, how freaking beautiful. I just had to show this off because I'm obsessed. I am obsessed with this. Oh, it's just so gorgeous. Look at it. I mean, look at that. Then you have on the inside. Okay, first of all, um, hi, inside cover. Second of all, okay, I don't know if you can read this. It says, fear is the mind killer. Then, then this book keeps giving. It just keeps giving. 
And then on the back cover, I think there's another one. Yep. Another one on the back. So this is the full inside of the cover. Look at that. Oh. Oh, it's gorgeous. Like, cool. I mean, I just... I can't. I can't handle it. It's so... It's too much. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. We have the map. Mmm. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, I just had to share that with you. If you haven't seen it yet. It's so freaking beautiful. I'm having troubles with getting it back on. Go! That's your home! Okay. So there's that. And that does it for my book haul. You guys, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you got some, found some new book that you might want to check out. And um, if you have any other suggestions or if you know anything more about these books with that spoiler free that you want to discuss with me, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And that's going to be it for today. Um, please don't forget if you enjoyed my content to like and subscribe. Um, and I will catch you next time. Cheers.